Man, it's a lot of fun going through these old home movies, isn't it? Why would anyone get any pleasure in seeing the time you will never get back? Eh, you're no fun. Aw, look how cute I was as a baby! Why do I not remember any of this? Oh hey, what's this one? I don't recognize this one. Oh, I guess I wouldn't remember it. It's from 1988. A Halloween tape, huh? Wait. What did you say? Huh. Oh, well, hell, let's pop it in. I love Halloween, obviously. No, pop it in! Hundreds of thousands marched the streets demanding the return of the dread guillotine. But there's across Britain and Scotland, the violence is almost unbearable. Hundreds of thousands marched the streets demanding the return of the dread guillotine. But there's across Britain and Scotland, the violence is almost unbearable. What appears to be a twisted copycat murder of two. So far, 11 girls. Well, well, you see, the thing about that is... Damn, you're weird! My family's home movies are weird. <laughs> Well, we reached another Jimmy Screamer Claus movie, and if you don't know who I'm talking about, let me refresh your memory. He's watching you. Yeah. Huh. Ugh. You know, this was my very first movie review too. Really started off with a bang, didn't I? May I offer you some candy or a Ninja Turtle? <laughs> Look at that idiot not comfortable in front of the camera. Not like me, right guys? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, May. I've got a bone to pick with you. <clears throat> I'm sure you're asking yourself, why do I talk about these kinds of movies if I don't like graphic horror? Sex with animals. There's no time, man. Honestly, I don't have a problem with it. It's one of the reasons why I first went looking for where the dead goes to die to begin with. Plus, I've watched and played some pretty messed up movies and video games. I read horror novels involving murder, torture, rape, and other things that probably explain a lot about me. <coughs> the only thing that bothers me with graphic horror is when I spend money on a product that has multiple spelling errors all over the damn thing. Oh, we will get to you in your novels, Mr. Matt Shaw. We will get to you. Whew, all right, enough of that. When Blackbirds Fly is Jimmy Screamer Claus's newest movie. There's not a whole lot of information online other than it premiered at the lead singer of Pantera's Horror House Film Festival in 2015, where it won Best Animated Film. I have tried to find the lineup for the nomination, but couldn't because I have to know what movie lost to this movie? The movie opens in this stylish old school credit sequence, which is something I will always appreciate. Oh no! <laughs> oh, looks like a broken wing. Tobias Funke takes the injured bird home and shows his wife, Norma. Oh, Daryl, not again. What? Nothing should be in pain. You know, this voice acting isn't nearly as bad as I was expecting it to be. I was not ready for this. Ah. Daryl puts the blackbird in a box to help it heal and Norma asks him, When do you think we'll get approved for the birthing? How I would love to raise a child in heaven. What? Okay, for clarification, they're living in a place called Heaven, which is a cult you find out later. But I have to admit, I laughed at that line because it's the first sentence that starts to set up the world we're watching and it comes out of nowhere. I'll get it. Good morning. Oh, thank goodness. For a moment, I didn't think there'd be anything I can make fun about in this movie. The prosperity gospel priest lets Norma and Daryl know their application to have a baby was accepted and... Whoa, wait, what? I hope that when you read this note and realize that it doesn't say what the character is talking, that the fourth wall will be broken and will take you out of the movie. Making a lot of assumptions I was in the movie to begin with there, bucko. And god, Jimmy has the worst handwriting. And the second part makes less sense than the newspaper from the Scarecrow movie. Wait, didn't that one have a sequel? Well, whatever. 
they go through this really trippy birthing ceremony, even though they're just getting worms. That'll make sense in a minute. The scene is actually kind of artistic and pretty to look at. I don't have any nitpicks here. I like what he did. Folksy music is a nice touch too. Are you ready, Citizen Norma? Ugh, stop that. Have you chosen a name for him yet? We wish to call him Marius. Little Marius. That pause before saying the kid's name makes me think you actually didn't have a name prepared. And really, Marius? Does he look like a 60-year-old man? Norma and Daryl agree to raise little Marius within the laws of the cult, and they walk through, oh my god, the acid flashback! Well, I hope you packed your bags, kid, because you're about to go on a trip. The end of this bad trip is the worm nursery, where they argue about which worm baby they want. Aw, what's wrong with that one? He's been here for a long time. They eventually choose the runt of the litter and they head back to the church. Gotta love that preacher man's walk. Daryl sticks a knife down his throat and vomits blood into a cup and Norma sticks it up her deli counter and bleeds into the same cup. I can't believe that sentence just came out of my mouth. And they dump it on the worm baby. Did I start sniffing white out again? From that, a bouncing 10-year-old baby boy is born and they parade his naked ass about the town. I'm starting to think this movie might be a little weird. Hmm. He kind of looks like that kid from the abortion of a movie, Seed of Chucky. Yeah, this thing. This. Daryl and Norma take the naked kid home and tell Marius all about their world and their leader, Kane. Look, sweetie. He's taking a liking to Kane already. Yeah, I hear you, kid. If I was born as a worm to these two airheads in a fancier version of Jonestown, I too would have a look of constant despair and fear. They send Marius to school where he can be properly brainwashed by the teacher, Mr. Apple. Sure. Who straight up looks like a diddler. During recess, Marius takes note of the insane amount of Kane propaganda splayed all over the school. Holy crap and spots the blue-eyed girl from his class, Eden, subtle, on the jungle gym. Well, what you looking at? God damn it, Jimmy, if you have to have kids in your movie, use female voice actresses. Eden is fascinated by the wall which was built by their savior, Kane, to keep out a supposed evil one. Don't you wonder what's behind it? A story the teacher tells while scaring the shit out of these eight-year-olds. And really, guys, this scares you. <laughs> Ah, these child character models all have adult faces. It's horribly distracting. It's creepier than Cheryl from the original Silent Hill. Marius heads home where Daryl has set up a bird hospital in his driveway. Oh, Honestly, Daryl and Norma are kind of adorable in their childlike innocence. It's just too bad it's overshadowed by the obvious and thorough brainwashing these two went through. That night, the family gathers around to watch some good old family indoctrination. <laughs> Destroy this place! Man, this new Power Rangers really went off the rails, didn't it? Please take me back, Katie Pie! Please! Goodbye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was kind of funny. Marius wanders the streets of heaven watching a person murmur to a poster of Cain while others watch a street preacher. God, this place is boring. He follows a blackbird to a hole in the wall where a talking cat begs him to cross over and help her. Please, little boy. I need your help. This rightfully spooks the boy who flees and runs into Eden. Marius, you have to take me there right now! That's it! Look, right there! Who's there? Somebody? Hey! Hey there! My name's Eden! Are you alright? Before Eden can aid the cat, Kane's men spot them. They run back to their school when <gasps> it's that bitch Tommy. You know we have to go back for that kitty, right? Are you sure it's just a good idea to go on the other side of the wall, Eden? All I know is that since I've been here, nothing has felt right. Quit throwing your garbage into our dimension. <laughs> 
The cat tells him to eat the fruit because it'll make him invisible, and then this happens. So this is... is is this what happens when you give a cat catnip? Because I've never owned one. I don't know. The cat becomes a cat lady and uses the blackbirds to massacre Kane's men. I paid ten dollars for this movie. Could have had a milkshake. Or drugs. She then takes these two grade schoolers tripping on acid out into the evil one's world. This seems inappropriate for these kids. Hello. Oh, I know they're high, but these guys really don't react to anything, do they? Oh, would you look at that? That guy's head came right off. They meet the evil one who tells them a story about God. God wanted something new. He wanted to create pure beauty. Which she failed at because, well, look at her. Long story short, God was cucked by the evil one and murdered his people in a jealous rage and ran away, which forced her to wander alone for eternity. You know, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this isn't in the Bible. I, I don't think I ever read it though, so that probably would have helped. I discovered love. But... I made some mistakes. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I accidentally lit people on fire. <sighs> Marius, the only logical thinking one in this whole movie, runs away because why would you stick around in a place where goat people are fucking the corpses of the cops and gets busted by the patrol and returned home? Oh, Marius, I'm so happy you're home. I love you so much. Go not flame. Just fine, dear. Now let's get you ready for bed. You think I was too hard on him? No, you're a great father. Did he just hover hand his own wife? Marius is just a wee bit upset his best friend disappeared and no one seems to notice or care. Meanwhile, Eden is- oh, come on. What is with you and naked kids? It's back turned during your birth. Damn it, Jimmy, we went over this. Annoying does not equal scary. Anyway, the cat lady is using Eden as a way to access heaven. She becomes this weird hybrid of a rabbit and a child, but the people of heaven will only see her as a rabbit. And bird, you wanna know why? Why? Because Kane knows every time a little tiny baby bird dies and falls to the ground. But he leaves it there to show us how much he loves us and how much the evil one hates us. The weird stuff Marius coughed into Norma's mouth earlier finally begins to negatively affect her and she rips off her clothing and starts convulsing. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's really rare to see good parenting in these kind of movies, but... <laughs> Oh, okay, well, there you go. Dad, why are you helping Mom? What's going on? Couples, they don't... <laughs> they don't see each other without their clothes on. What? Why? It's one of the rules. Jeez, what are they teaching you in these schools? How about some ice cream? Wait, I feel like this movie is messing with me. <laughs> How is it? Marius, is it good? I don't know, Dad. I'm not exactly in the mood for ice cream right now. Aw, oh, sure you are. Dad, Dad, help me. We better wait a little while. She sounds like she's in a mood right now. <laughs> I like Daryl. The bird starts talking to Daryl and instructs him to help Norma birth whatever the hell is coming out of her. You can talk? Of course I can. Didn't they teach you anything in school, sir? No. Oh, you're not superior. You should really get in there and help us. But Bird, I can't go in there while her squidly pie is out. This movie, this movie is messing with me. Marius runs for help, but no one acknowledges him except. <laughs> This is ridiculous! I'm basically watching a SWAT team get their ass kicked by Peter Cottontail. 
I love this movie. <laughs> Kane then orders his followers to be gunned down, which is really expected, actually. A high Daryl cuts the thing out of Norma and chases it naked down the street, or as I like to call it, Grand Prairie on a Friday night. The one Canadian subscribed to me got that joke. Norma is murdered by the death squad and Marius is brought in front of Kane. At this point, the movie kind of just devolves where God from the story earlier was actually Kane's story. Half of the people went with him to establish heaven while the others stayed with the evil one in the woods. Meanwhile, bloody naked Daryl takes the spawn into the woods, the death squad blow a hole into the wall, Daryl dies, Eden dies, Marius dies, everyone dies, and Cain is sent up to heaven with a few of his followers and the evil one is once again alone. Alright then. That's the end of the movie, by the way. Well, what can I say? I like this movie way more than Where the Dead Go to Die, which I suppose isn't saying much because I didn't like that movie. It's nicer to look at, the plot actually feels like one instead of someone trying to be an edgelord, and there are characters that are likable despite the circumstances. I, I'm kind of hoping Jimmy eventually learns to animate people a little more fluid and have less of a jerky, low-budget look. Some people like that look, but I think the better the people are animated, the more horrifying they'll become. That being said, I give him a little slack in that regard because... He's learning at least, you guys. The movie's on YouTube if you're interested. I get if you'd rather steer clear from anything that this creator makes, but you gotta appreciate when he learns from his past mistakes and grows from it. And if anything, the guy's got a lot of imagination. You can't fault him on that. Oh, one more thing. The movie has deleted scenes at the end of the credits, and I think this line is my favorite. What the hell are you doing, man? Don't point your gun at a kid! He just fell out of his window! Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time! What the hell happened to you, Spoon? Ah, uh, Snow. We're gonna get like eight months of this. My butt is frozen! Yeah, so's mine. You!